shout and touch the Lord as He passes by. You find He's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out. Hi, I'm Kelly Lynn, and welcome to Kelly Lynn Live at Reach Out Fellowship. We are having a Bible study tonight with some of the women, some of my sisters in Christ here, and I'd like to introduce you to some of them. Hi, welcome. This is Adele. Hi, good evening, and God bless. This is Renee. I am Francis. God bless you, and welcome to Reach Out. <laughs> good evening. This is, uh, my name is Barbara. God bless you all that are watching tonight. Amen. Well, tonight, um, we, you know, we have, uh, we've been meeting together and having a, a special time uh, praying for others and learning God's word. So we decided to kind of advance our uh, scope a little bit and uh, invite others to come along with us. So tonight, we're going to look at the, uh, the book of Matthew, first, uh, the first chapter. We're going to talk about the lineage of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to go back and look at some of the women that are in his lineage. Um, I asked the Holy Spirit today, I said, show us. We wanted to talk about, you know, the, the Christmas story, and, and that's what we are going to talk about. But we're going to start off a little bit about the genealogy. But first, we'd like to pray. And Sadell, would you open us up in prayer? Sure. Dear Lord, we just come before you. Lord, we come before you. Lord, we come to your throne. We just want to glorify you, Lord. We want to learn more about you. We want to learn about your lineage because we want to know everything about you, Lord. We love you and we, we just want to honor you. And Lord, we just lift up anyone listening and anyone that will see in the future and just, Lord, bless them. Help them to know you too, Jesus and how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if you have your Bibles, we're, on, we're in the New Testament. Um, we're going to be looking at Matthew. Um, so if you would go to the book of Matthew, it's okay. Mm -hmm. and we're going to go all the way over. And we lost our spot. I did that. That's I okay. Apologize. Don't be spelled. Oh, um, let me see. Uh, so we're going to go to the book of Matthew, Matthew 1, and we're going to start with, let me see, yep, we're on, and oh, sorry, we're going to look at uh, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. We're in Matthew 1. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Sarah, Zerah by Tamar, Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Amadadab, Amadadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh, Manasseh begot Amon, and Amon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jacana. And his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot uh, Shealtai, and Shealtai begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abiad, Abiad begot Elikim, and Elikim begot Azar. Azar begot Zadok, Zadok begot Ahem, and Ahem begot Elad. Elad begot Eleazar, Eleazar begot Matan, and Matan begot Jacob. 
and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. That is the genealogy uh, written in the book of Matthew. The genealogy of Jesus from Matthew's account shows that Jesus was given legal heir to the promises given through Abraham and David. Matthew is writing primarily to the Jews. This genealogy gives Joseph's line, showing Jesus to be legal heir to the promises given Abraham and King David. Matthew wanted to present Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah, promised to King David. This genealogy traces Jesus' Jesus' lineage back to King Solomon, son of King David. This entitles Jesus to be in the kingly line and to be the king of kings. May he be our king. As we will see, many of those found in the lineage of Jesus included people with unsavory backgrounds, including harlots and outcasts. We're going to learn about those tonight. We're going to learn about the royal tapestry. We're going to talk about three women chosen. But first, we'd like to hear the rest of chapter one, and each one of the ladies are going to take a little bit of time going around reading from the book of Matthew. Uh, we're going to start at Matthew 18, 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Go ahead, Barb. This is verse 20. Mm -hmm. But as he was th thinking this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of, of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he would save his people from their sins. You can do the next one. Go ahead. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying behold the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us then Joseph being aroused from his sleep did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him he took her to his side as his wife but he said, did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and, she, and he gave him the name Jesus. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Praise God. So as we, as we look at the genealogy and then we see Matthew's account, um, we're going to take a few moments to, this month we're going to be looking at um, the birth of Jesus, the Christmas story. Uh, it's not called the Christmas story in here, but many know it as that. But we wanted to first look at the genealogy, and uh, this week we're going to look at three of the women who are in the genealogy. So if we want to turn to, um, the first thing we want to turn to is uh, in the book of Matthew, verse 1, two through three. And if Renee, if you could, re or, or who's going to read that? I can read it. Okay. Read it, yeah. Go right ahead. Yeah. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zara and Tamar. Perez begot Hezron and Hezron begot Ram. So that's what we're going to talk about right now is Tamar. They mention in the book of Matthew and verse uh, 1, 3, uh, the, the about Tamar. Now, many 
probably don't know this story about Tamar, but it's, uh, it's somewhat of a story that is, uh, it, it, Tamar was really hurt. She was mistreated. And we're going to learn about that. She also uh, had an issue with immorality, um, but yet she's written in the line here, and some very interesting things are said about her in uh, Genesis. So um, would you like to read on that, uh, Sadell? So Genesis 38, 6, 6 to 11. So Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onar, Go into your brother's wife and marry her, and raise up a heir for your, for your, to your brother. But Onar knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass that when he went into his brother's wife, that he admitted on the ground, lest he should give her an heir to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore he killed him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house till my son Selah is grown. For he said, Least he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. So a little background about this. Um, we're a little bit of explanation, and then um, we're going to ask for the girls here. J uh, Judah took a wife for uh, his firstborn. Ur was his name. He married Tamar. He took his son and gave her to Tamar. The Lord, the Bible says that the Lord killed her husband Ur because he was wicked. Now, back in the, uh, th those days, if the, if the husband died and there was no heir, they would marry the brother. So, lo and behold, she goes and she marries Onan, who is the second son of Judah, as was the custom. They have relations, and he basically takes the seed and throws it to the ground instead of allowing her to have, to have an inheritance and have a baby. Uh, God, obviously, was not happy with that, and he, the Bible says that he was wicked and he killed him also. So now two of her husbands are dead. She's now had two husbands. So the father-in-law, Jodah, says, I will give you my other son when he's old enough. And tell us what happened, mother. He didn't. And he didn't. He didn't give her son, so he was after that, she dressed so as, you know, the Buddhist robe, and then she dressed up like a Harlot. Oh, no, this honest woman. I don't want to say the word. Harlot. A harlot. A harlot. Right, you know. Yes. And, um, and oh. then the father in law went, oh, sorry. And then the father in law went Thank to you. her and um, she became pregnant for her. her so she. So what happens is she, she decides now she has terrible injustice. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. finds out many years of this. She finds out um, both of her husbands were wicked. Um, and the third one she was supposed to have, um, he, he marries someone else, mm -hmm. Judah lies, and now she's without a husband. So she plays the harlot, she dresses up, she does trick her father-in-law, who goes to sleep with the harlot, he sees her, mm -hmm. he goes to sleep with her. She becomes pregnant with twins, mm -hmm. and they now, when they find out, Judah says she, she must be killed. Uh, she had thought ahead of time. She took one of his garments to prove, and um, he took the staff. Tell us him. about it. He took the staff from him, and then when they found out that she was pregnant, um, they, um, Judah wanted her to, to bring her to like that. They stoned her to death. Right. But then she said, "Oh no, I'm pregnant for the, who, the one who owned this staff." Yes. And then he said he didn't know. She was smart. Yes. She saved that, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So at the end, if you could read 3826. Could you do one sure. of you? Sure. You want to do that? I'll, I'll read it. Go yeah. ahead. 
So Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I, because I did not give her to Sheila, my son, and he never knew her again. So, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the, the Bible, or in the scriptures, um, those two sons are in the lineage mm -hmm. um, of the righteous uh, kings. So, you know, again, this is the lineage. And what do we learn from, from this? She, you know, she, there, it was immoral, right? She, mm -hmm. she dressed up as a harlot. harlot. Yes. Um, but she did seek justice. Mm -hmm. And she needed justice. Mm -hmm. You know, today, as we're thinking about justice, we're all, we see a lot of injustice. Yes. And I was reminded that God is a God of justice, mm -hmm. and he will bring justice to his people. Amen. Um, is there anything you want to say about that story? This, about Tamar, and you want to add something? Well, in that time, in that time, the woman wouldn't have a choice only to have a child, I for inheritance, or say, I think, if that's I'm saying right. it right. But that's right. And so we weren't in a woman's world there, right? No. no. Mm -hmm. So we so. have more choices today, yep. which would be different. We, we do. We do. We do. Um, but God is so great. The yes. Lord is so gracious Amen. that he did not, God, God doesn't look like we look at people. Yes. And so uh, the message in this is that God uses all, Anyone, yes. if you're willing. Yes. He's looking for willing people today mm -hmm. to stand up. Amen. To be brave. Mm -hmm. And to say, to stand up for justice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm getting from this. We're going we're gonna to read about someone else. We have some time. We have a little bit of more time. So um, what the summary is, and then I'll just give a quick summary. Tamar had two husbands. She experienced loss and wasn't treated fairly. But she did not get up, give up but rather sought justice. Many would believe because of her immorality, she would not be celebrated in scripture. And yet she became the first woman to be included in the family tree. All right. Now, so, do you think it was because of her, her pregnancy? I, I think some of it, but also she, she did seemed to wait and she did stay in the in the family so she so what what she she actually receives justice she has two sons and now they're in their kingly line um yes. so she, she waited that's a good point right yeah. so her sons were the just they that's what made her justice the, sure, she, exactly. she had to those sons. That's what made her justice she by had, having the she two was sons for in, in the line. Correct. Yes, okay. there was some justice. Very good. Yes. yes, yes. What a blessing, right? Very much so. Right? Yes. And even Judah seen it in the verse you read. Uh, and that is the biggest point right there. Judah says she is more righteous, righteous. than me. I mean. That's right. Okay. Because she didn't have proof. With the staff. Because I did not <laughs> give her to <laughs> she Sheila, likes that proof. my son. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. why he Very good. Her from that's death. right. From yes. that's stone, right. being stoned to death. That's right. Yeah. Right, because she, she would have been stoned to death. death. Yeah. And then what uh, and Judah say, oh, she's more right than me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and he she, ag act, yeah. right, he agreed. You know? He did. And he was acting out of fear because he wasn't looking that his sons were wicked. He was just looking his sons are dead. I mean, which would be really hard. Of mm -hmm. course, of so course, of course. It, Absolutely. So the next one we're going to look at, because um, we're just looking at three women. We'll probably go to about 8.15. We'll see. Um, the next one we're going to be looking at is Rahab. So um, in the book of Joshua, if you want to turn to Joshua, and um, these ladies over here are going to read that. We're going to talk about, when you, when you find Joshua 2, let me know. Rahab was a prostitute. And she was the one who forces, who foresees the Israelites as inheriting the land. Amen. Unbelievable, yes. right? Yes. I know that the Lord has given you the land. So we're going to read about that. Are you ready to uh, let me know when you're there? Somebody want to go? I'm here. Okay, go ahead. You want to start? Joshua 2, 8 yep. through 9. Go, good. go right ahead. Before the two men had laid down, Rahab came up to them on the roof on the roof and she said to the men 
I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Very good. Mm -hmm. It is written in the scriptures that the rulers of Jericho tried to cha capture the men. Rahab lies and says the men have left her home. Uh, uh, the men have left her, and she, you know, she says they left her home. Um, she then proceeds to hide the men on the roof of the, ho uh, ho of the house. Joshua 2.11, if you want to read that, Mother Francis. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. So here's a prostitute acknowledging she has a, you know, she lives in some kind of a unit with, I think, with all of her family. Mm -hmm. And she's acknowledging that, um, who God is. Yeah. She yeah. sees it. She foresees it. So, Mother Frances, can you read 12 to 15, Joshua sure. 2 to 12 right. to 15? Now then, please swear, swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the life of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our life for your, for your life, the men assure her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. No, that's great. Hold on right okay. there. One uh -huh. second. So Rahab lets the men, so she, she has these men. Okay, this is what's going on. Mother Frances, tell us a little bit what's going on about the men, the Rahab. Do you know it's, you understand that, right? Yeah. Well, Rahab, Rahab, that's what you pronounce it on. Yeah. Rahab, yes. um, she was, um, she was afraid because um, the fear of the Jewish people was falling already on the, the, the other people around her. Right. So when they came in looking for um, hiding, you know, the way they were hiding, so um, Rahab took them uh, and put them in a container and covered them with flash sea or something That's like right, that. Right, right. And then after that, when the, the people left, the one that we were asking this, the two Jewish guy, he told them that they went in and he told them that they were not there, they had gone and they had went to different way. Right. So then they left and then, but then when the guys, they left, the one that we were pursuing, the two Indians, uh, the two Jewish guy, then Rehab went over and I told her that they were going to get out and then they went away. So like that, they gave in to Rehab the, the certain that they weren't going to kill her and their family. Right. Right. But then besides that, it's more to go on that. Well, the thing is, Joshua <laughs> sent these two men over to the land because mm -hmm. God had told them to go into the Canaanite land and, and take mm -hmm. it over. Mm -hmm. So um, when Rahab finds out about this, she sees and she, she already knows the fear of the dread of the land has all yeah. come on. And mm -hmm. she knew, she said, this is their land. They're going to win. He knew that God of, uh, this is the God of heaven and earth. They're going to win. Okay? God is going to win. And so she takes the men in. She hides them. And they come and say, where are the men? We know you have them. Mm -hmm. And she says, no, they left. And so now she says, okay, now this is what I want. I got this from, uh, uh, from the Jewish reading. Uh, For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Rahab lets the man through the window. She requests a return for her act of hased. Hased, I have shown loyalty. She mm -hmm. proceeds to ask for protection for herself and for her family. And that's what Mother Frances just read, Joshua 12 to 15. She asked that she and her family be spared when the Israelites attack Jericho. So if you could, um, the spies give her a crimson thread, and that is in uh, Joshua 6, 17. Does someone want to read that? Can you read that, Barbara? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Six, uh, there, um, let me see if I get to that. The spies give her a crimson thread to hang from her window. What does this sound like? Uh, the blood of Jesus. And when did this happen? The Passover. The, and, well, when Jesus, oh, sorry. when Jesus died, 
also about in in Exodus in the Passover when he asked them to put the blood of the lamb to protect a protection. Absolutely, wow. same thing all over again. It's like a template, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, she asked that she and her family be spared when the Israelites attack Jericho. So the spies give her a crimson mm -hmm. thread to hang from her window. And they instruct her that she is to gather her family and wait inside her house as long as they stay indoors. I felt that was very important. <laughs> as long as they stay indoors, they will be spared. They will be exempted from the um, obligation to destroy all the Canaanites, which is a harem. Read Joshua 6.17. Um, oh, go ahead. No. But you're going to continue with your plane already. Oh, no, you can read 15. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Pick up. Okay, then 15. Absolutely. Verse 15. Joshua chapter 2, verse 15, it says, So she let them down by a, by a robe through the window. For the house she lived, it was part of the city wall. And that's it. Very good. You can read 16, too. 16 too. She said to them, Go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there three days until they, re they return and they go on your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And so if you go down to 625, mm -hmm. okay, now they told her what to do. And I'm kind of, we, we like to read the scriptures and then explain it mm -hmm. because many people don't understand, right? The scriptures, you know, you got to really, so I'm kind of given the summary in like plain lingo. Right. Um, but if you could go to 625, Barbara, it's your turn. Can you read that? So Joshua saved Rehab, the harlot, with her father's household and all that she had. And she lives in Israel even to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Yeah. Oh, amen. So uh, Rahab and her family are a new Israel. Rahab, once a marginalized woman, we call these today disparities. Yeah, she knows. Disparities. We call these disparities, right? A Canaanite, she was a marginalized woman, a Canaanite, and a prostitute, destined to become a bearer of divine messengers. Mm. She is remembered as an ancestress of kings and prophets, and ultimately, she is found in the line of Jesus in Matthew 1, 5. Could you read Matthew 1, 5, just so they understand where that is? 1, 5. Solemn. Begot Boaz by. Oh. That's okay. Solemn begot Boaz by Rahab. Oh, let me. That's fine. Sure. That's great. Um, you can read more. Yes. Sorry. Solemn begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Amen. Which is our next story. And that's and the next one. Obed thing. begot Jesse. And we know that Jesse begot Jabed the king. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And um, we're going to continue. We're going to go for another 15 minutes. So we're good. Um, if you look to, um, now the other one we chose that's in the book and the lineage here, um, there's more, but we're only going to do three tonight, is Ruth. Um, and I keep promising my other students that I wouldn't say um. I guess I use that as a filler. In the book of Ruth, we read about Naomi. Naomi's husband dies, and she is left with two sons. So we're touching on three different women in the Bible. Uh, if you look under, if someone could read, who was going to read Ruth? Ruth 1? Okay, Ruth 1, 8 to 9. I'll do that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, Go return each to, your mo to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you've de dealt with me, as you dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each in the house of her husband. So she kissed him and lifted up their voices. And they lifted up their voices and wept. Excellent. So give you a little story about Ruth. We're gonna, uh, that's one of the most famous. Uh, there's another one, uh, 15 to 17. Uh, Ruth 1, 15 to 17. Go ahead. And she said... Look, your sister-in-law was going back to her people and to get gods. Into her gods. Into her gods. It's okay. Light. Into her gods' return. I can't see it. 
Return Sorry. after your sister-in-law. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me now to leave you or to turn back following after you. For whenever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will be a buried Lord to do so to me and more also. If anything but death parts you and me. Beautiful. And so let me tell you a little bit about the story here about the book of Ruth. In the book of Ruth, we read about Naomi. Naomi's husband dies, and she is left with two sons. What are their names? Do you remember? Both sons marry. One wife um, is called Oprah, and the other one was Ruth. So we have Naomi, and she had two sons. Um, Moab. That's correct. Because if that's a good point. You should say. Uh, after ten years, uh, one wife is called Oprah, and the other, uh, the one daughter, uh, one wife of this one son is Oprah. The other one is Ruth. Mm -hmm. After ten years, the sons both die. Mm -hmm. yeah. so sad. All right. So Naomi's husband died, and then both of the sons died. Right. All right. Now I am a mother-in-law. I can only imagine mm -hmm. my sons, God forbid, and my husband, right? And then I'm left with two daughter-in-laws. This is what happens. She's left with two daughter-in-laws. Yeah. Uh, after 10 years, the, the sons die, and Naomi's left two daughter-in-laws. And Naomi says to her daughter-in-laws, and she looks at her daughter-in-laws, and she says, go back to your family, all right? I have no life for you here, daughters. She loved them. Yes. Right. Yes. Ruth had the opportunity, uh, so Naomi says to her daughter-in-laws, and we just said, go back to your family. Ruth has the opportunity to start her life over. Naomi could not promise her financial security. Oprah decides to leave. Yes. Ruth decides to stay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And Ruth could have rejected the uncertainty of a new land and new people. She could have gone home to her family like Oprah did, Oprah had done. But instead, she chooses to stay close to her mother-in-law, which is what a, what a wonderful thing. The husband, back then, there wasn't welfare. There wasn't Social Security, right. no. okay? Right. There, uh, all right, there was nothing. No, no. So the one daughter-in-law stays with her. And Ruth shows great love for her mother-in-law, Naomi, and was faithful to the... And also, she's faithful to the Lord. She's not leaving this woman alone, all right? Yeah. So the Lord rewards... Re rewards her faithfulness with a husband and her name was his name is Boaz they have a child they call him Obed yes. uh, Naomi becomes the grandmother to Obed and Jesse becomes is, is the son of Obed and of course the father of King David Ruth is mentioned in the line of David the king of Israel and of course this line leads to Jesus and the most one of the most famous could you read the famous line again I think it's her Ruth 15 to 17, um, entreat me. Could you read that oh, again? yes. Do you want me to read it? Go ahead. Sure. Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Amen. Amen. So as we're looking at, let's look back at these three different women. And I want to hear from these ladies of what you think you could, what character traits or virtues do these ladies have? And, um, and we have a few questions on the back of, um, we're going to talk about. But the, the first, well, the first thing is, the first question, we just look at the questions. What have we learned about these three women? And we're only touching on them. We could do big studies, but they are in the line, yes. the genealogy. Mm -hmm. And um, what did you, the Tamar, the first one, and if take your time, pass the thing around, tell us what you think. I, I, I mean, this is just a general, like, just because they're in the line of Jesus, it gives us all hope that no matter what we have done, that we are, that God will allow us to be part of his family. In F, not even allow, but he wants us. He, he loves us. Accepts. No matter, he accepts us. Yes. No matter what. Thank you, Lord. And... That can be us. We could be tar Tamar at times, or even Ruth, because we're not of the family of 
God in the we are adopted in by Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> grafted in. Grafted in. You're grafted in. If so, so, so your your family bloodline, you may not have Jewish lineage, or you may not have royal lineage, but God loves everyone. Yes. Right? Yes. And um, you may have made a mistake of your life. Tamar had immorality. Yes. Um, how many of us have been immoral, right? How many of us have had a husband or two husbands? God, yes. I mean, it happens. Yes. And so, but God says, I still love you and you are still valuable. Yes. What? He can, he can use us all. T tell us he about can, that. He can, God can always use everyone in our lives for us. We, we are able to be able to use no matter what, uh, no matter what we've done. We, we go to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness and he forgives us and he uses us. He has a plan for each one of us in our lives. Yeah. And Barbara, you've been uh, following the Lord for many, many years. You, yes. Barbara and I have very similar <laughs> lives. We do. Uh, we've, and we have, it was very hard for us. Um, and my husband always says, when you found the Lord, that was the end. You never turned back. No. You, once you find the Lord and you really put your faith in the Lord, you don't want to turn back. No. The world has nothing out there for you, believe me. <laughs> and Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. <laughs> Our Amen. salvation is very Amen. important to have salvation. And what about Rahab? Um, what about, who, does anybody have anything to say about Rahab? Rahab was the prostitute. Tamar uh, had two husbands, and she, she acted as a harlot because she wanted yes. justice. She did receive justice. Rahab was a prostitute. She had all of her family. She recognized the Israelites. What do you, what did you, what do you think, what, do you, what have you learned about her? Any, what do you think? She... She, she recognized the power of God, and she knew that God was able to take, and she knew the prophecy, right? She knew that, that God was going to destroy that city, that the power, and the Israelites had been, like they seen the water, like where Moses, the, they knew that God was capable of everything. And so she, she was putting her trust in God, and she was, in a way, making it, you know, protecting her family too. Like, and she was looking out, but she knew the power of God. And God yeah. rewarded her. Yeah. Um, he gave the protection to her. I think it was, uh, you know, was, I think it's very important, I picked that out, that the Lord, that they said to her, as long as you stay indoors. Mm. <laughs> I thought about that. When God gives us a commandment, oftentimes he's very detailed. So we need to listen to his voice. Mm -hmm. What does he want me to do? What does he want us to do? Should we go here? Should we go there? Should we do this? Should we take that? Should we take this? What should we do? Lord, show us. And where I am today, will you show me? Yes. Father, show me. What am I to do? Where do I go? How do I walk this out? Listen to his still small voice. Ask him. He'll show you. Um, and what about Ruth? Does anybody have anything to say about Ruth? She was faithful, greatly rewarded. Go ahead, Renee. Personally, for me, from what I got, she had a lot of strength. I mean, look what she dealt with her sons, her two daughter-in-laws, actually telling one, to, or both of them to go. That's Naomi. And, That's right. Naomi. That's Naomi right. to go. And, strength. Yep. and uh, the, the strength that she held up absolutely that really she had a lot of strength and then ruth had a lot of strength to stay stay that's what you meant yes ruth had a lot yes. of strength and god greatly rewarded her and that's what he does she was faithful Amen. you know who wouldn't want to have a daughter-in-law that would be faithful to you and love you, love you. and love you because it's not easy to love a mother-in-law you know because they're not your family mm -hmm. it's not the same so um, if you have a, a daughter-in-law who truly loves you, what a gift. What a gift, right? May we all be, uh, you know, I keep, I tell my husband, when I meet his mother in heaven, I'm going to give her a big hug. 
Can't wait I say the her. same thing about my husband. I never met my husband's Aww. mother, but from what I was told, from what the stories that were, Aww. I can't wait to meet her because she was amazing. Aww. I mean, just like my husband was, to be honest. But yeah, Aww. amazing. Just there's nobody ever had anything negative to say about Nan Cano. They Aww. just didn't. That's yeah. nice. And you know, Renee lost her husband how long ago? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. So. Renee has, um, she's been really seeking the Lord, and we're grateful to have her, um, and we're grateful to hear. How are you doing, Renee, with that? Better. Very much better. The Lord, really. And tell them how me. you've been really pressing into the Lord when you've been, when it's been hard. Yes. At first, I mean, I always believed. I, I always believed in God, Jesus Christ, my Savior, the whole, I, I truly did. But now it's in a deeper, more faithful way, just in the last year. And the more I prayed and said, you know, something's, I, I, need, I need more. I could feel it. I wanted more. And he came through. And God is carrying you. He came you. through. Got yes, it. he is the carrying The Lord will me. carry you. If you, yeah. all you have to do is ask him. We I'm ask so thankful him. for that. What, what do all these women have in common? Anybody have any ideas? Just, I, I, there's no right or wrong. I think they have love. Have a love. Love is good. Yeah, they. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, they, they have love for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Love for each other. Love for their families. I think they had um, respect, faith, mm -hmm. faith, faith. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and they all were persistent. Persistent. <laughs> persistent. persistent is so, exactly what I was thinking of. Okay, so you oh, were thinking you of that. You could see that. Yes. So we have to be persistent. We can't be laying down on the ground and saying, well, let someone else do it. You have to stand up for your beliefs. Amen. I, 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 the three things that I looked at of these characters I got out of here was uh, justice, loyalty, and faithfulness. Justice, loyalty, and faithfulness. So the Lord must really... Those character traits are so important. Those, yeah. they're virtues. That's something, and I, you know, I realized about myself, I, I just had a lot of, uh, I was thinking, missing character traits. And over the years, I'm really working on that. I'm trying to develop, because you, not everybody's born with those. No. So how can we develop those? One way to develop, though, is to study about other people and about people that have walked before us in greatness and have done great things. Um, so, you know, how did... God do, builds our character. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah, God builds our character. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Tell us. Well, because I know that my character has increased. <laughs> when I first came to the Lord, I was very uh, insecure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just always... I was not sure of anything sometimes because I've been in in life just kind of knocks you down a few times. Right. But as I grew in the Lord and learned his word um, and listened to the teachings of the Lord, you know, and reading the Bible, God can just show you different things. And he also, he uses sometimes things that we think are bad for us, like maybe losing a job. I thought that was the worst thing in my whole life. I just shut the door and said, I'm never leaving again. But God built my character from that. He just, I just, Amen. after I finished, I, I read Esther at that time. Amen. And the more Amen. I read about Esther, I said, well, this isn't so bad. I can get through this. But it didn't start there. Wow. I mean, it, it came through the word and, and praying. So God uses bad things that we think are bad, but they're not. They're, they're there to build our character. That's in it's Jesus wonderful. Name. God uses all things for good for those that love, love the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. And according to his purpose, right? Yes. yes. So we are grateful for that. We do have um, a few prayer uh, uh, people that we could pray for quickly. And I was thinking if there's anybody who needs any prayer, we could pray tonight for you. Um, and I was going to try frozen. to I'm frozen. There you go. Okay. okay. So if, we, if anybody needs prayer... Um, we could lift up. I do have a couple of people who do need to be lifted up. If we could, uh, I'll pass this around. And if you could just choose one person out of this, since we don't have anyone uh, on here tonight to pray for. And do any of you need prayer? No? 
All right, I'm going to lift up Bonnie and Jack tonight. All right. Father God, we just thank you and praise you. We lift up Bonnie and Jack to you tonight. We ask that you would touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. We pray that no weapon formed against them would prosper. And Father, we ask this according to the word of God in Isaiah 53, that by your stripes we are healed. We're claiming healing. The Bible says that I am the, uh, I am the Lord that healeth thee, Exodus 15, 2. Father, we ask you to touch and heal Bonnie and Jack tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody else? You have anyone to want to lift up? Uh, yes. Go ahead. I, I, I have someone. Go her ahead. name is Linda. Go ahead. Um, Put it right up there. Just pray for her. I, of why or just? Just whatever she needs. Yes, yes. For Linda so much. That's okay. So, dear Lord, we just lift up Linda, Lord, Renee's friend Linda. We just ask you to totally protect her, heal her, guide her, give her wisdom. Yes, Father. Lord, give her wisdom. Yes, Deliver Lord. her from anything. Thank you, Lord. That she's going through. Praise you, Father. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Help Father. her feel your love, Lord. Help her feel your love. Amen. And help her to be safe and healed and protected and give her joy. Give her joy in the Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Amen. Yes. The joy of our Amen. Lord is our strength. Is yes. there anybody else that would Jesus like name. prayer for something? I would like to add in Cheryl, my friend that asked me to pray for Cheryl. Go right ahead. Lord Jesus, we lift up Cheryl too, Lord, to you, who, who was in hospital yesterday. I'm not sure if she is today, but I'm hoping that she is healed today. Yes. And that she's home. Hallelujah. And that she is well. Thank you, Lord, Father. Lord, bless her. Yes, Lord. And help her know the love of Jesus. And I'd like, to, I'd like to lift up Bonnie. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for the precious word. Oh, Lord, your word is so good. Come, Holy Spirit. Yes. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Come, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you and praise you. We pray for Bonnie. We ask you to touch her neck, Lord. We pray that you would put your hands upon her neck, Lord, and touch and heal her, Lord. Father, we ask you to heal her body. Father, the doctor says she has less than, she has a 50% chance if she has surgery, she will be paralyzed. Father, we ask that you would touch her and heal her. We ask for a miracle in her life. Thank you, Father. Touch and heal, Lord. May the Lord heal her. Come, Holy Spirit, touch Bonnie. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. El Shaddai. El Shaddai, Adonai, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Drake for emotional healing. We pray for Lauren, Lord, comfort him. We pray for Paul and Robin that you'd bless them, Lord. Help Paul to walk in good health. We pray, Father, that you would... Uh, honor that New York State would uh, lose and that they would honor the religious exemptions for health care workers. We pray for an end to this COVID. We pray for exposure of truth in the name Amen. of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Yes. Father God, Lord, help us. Lord, have mercy on us. Save your nation, Lord. Save your people, Lord. Show us what to do, Lord. Lead your people, Lord. Show us, Lord, where to go. Protect us, Lord. Help us. Bring forth deliverers that will deliver us from our enemies, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray for little Noah tonight. Touch and heal him. And we thank you and praise you for all these things, Father. Amen. And we like to say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. Shalom. moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He